Hello everyone, what's up? In this weathering tutorial, I'm going to show you how to weather your tanks with liquid pigments. Yes, you heard correctly, liquid pigments. More specifically, I will show you how I apply shading, streaking effects and rust effects to this awesome Bison LVT by Golden Dragon Games. Follow the link in the description if you're interested in this 3D printed model, by the way. So, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use liquid pigments, this video is for you. Before we start with the tutorial per se, a brief disclaimer first. A big thanks to Jackson at Golden Dragon Games for sending me this vehicle already printed. Now, don't own a 3D printer anymore, so I'm really grateful for that. However, this is not a paid promotion and all opinions are purely my own. Oh, and by the way, the tank is already on its way to Ville, one of my YouTube members, who won it at our fifth Race for Terra channel quiz. You could say this LVT is the gift that keeps on giving. This is one of several liquid pigment sets by Life Color. As you can see, it consists of five pigments and one remover. The liquid pigment we'll be using today is black umber, which has an interesting greenish black tone, I would say. I sprayed this neat, that is to say without any dilution, at around 18 psi with my Patriot. This here is my very first attempt. As you can see, there is zero spider webbing or spattering, and despite using a 0.5mm needle, which some would consider far too big for a job like this, I was able to easily add shading around details or the edges of panels. You will also notice that the shading this product creates is diffuse, first of all, and also semi-transparent. In any case, what really impressed me the most is that I was really able to do this without any effort. Yes, I had to clean the tip of the needle a couple of times, but there was no clogging whatsoever, and as long as I kept the airbrush in motion, it was super easy to control the flow. Now, if you're a long-time viewer, you probably know that I quite like the Ammo of Make shaders, which are a very similar product. However, I must say that these Life Color liquid pigments are far, far more forgiving, where with the shaders, I almost always struggle to avoid spider webbing, here it was never an issue. Next, I thought, let's try and create some streaks with the airbrush. Now, I've only ever done this with heavily thin lacquer paints before, as those give me a level of control that I've never been able to get with any other product. To my surprise, the liquid pigments work great for this, and as you will see in a second, mistakes can be removed. And speaking of removing, this is the Life Color Remover, which, like the rest of these products, is acrylic and non toxic. My first attempt at using it was this streak that you saw me create before. Now, this was four hours after I had applied the pigment, and as you can see, this works in a roughly similar fashion to enamel thinner. Unlike with enamels or oils, this requires some elbow grease, so to speak, but it's also a much more progressive and subtle process, I would say. So, can we tackle bigger mistakes? Let's see. Here I had a pretty big buildup of pigment, so this was a good test of this product's capabilities. As you can see, I tried to drag it down to see what would happen, but that wasn't a good idea. In the end, not all the excess product was removed, but I was able to soften the shading and make it more diffuse. This is a very interesting quality, and you could argue that it's actually more desirable than simply removing the stuff, as you would with oils or enamels. In short, the remover was also a success. If you're enjoying this video, guys, consider joining the Race for Terra YouTube membership, which starts at only one euro a month. If you join the mid or top tiers, you will have access to ad-free, exclusive members-only videos, among other things. Check out the other perks. I also wanted to see if the liquid pigments could work a bit like streaking enamels, so I applied this bright rust pigment to some rivets the way that you would with a pin wash. After 20 minutes or so, I took a flat brush, slightly dampened with remover, and I tried to work the liquid pigment in the same way that I would with an enamel. This worked quite well, although this yellow rust color did not offer enough contrast against that bluish base coat. 
On my second attempt though, I noticed something very interesting. I was pulling the black umber pigments which I had applied over 24 hours ago. From this we can conclude that the working times for these pigments are actually quite flexible. I then applied some more pigment to the previous spot and decided to try to drag it down immediately, with no drying time whatsoever this time. This actually worked pretty well, and after playing around with it a few times, I was happy with the result. When done this way, you could say that they're more finicky than enamels maybe, but they're also softer and definitely a very interesting alternative. If you like the way that the tracks look on the finished piece, I have a secret to tell you. Doing these tracks took me all of 15 minutes from start to finish and I only ever used two of these liquid pigments to do it. Absolutely nothing else. One of the questions that I get the most, especially from more gamers, is whether it's possible to get a decent result on your tank tracks without a complicated weathering process with multiple steps. Now this here may well be the best solution that I've ever seen to answer that particular question. As you can see, the product in this case is applied pretty much indiscriminately, like you would with a wash. Unlike an acrylic wash, however, there are no signs of brush or tight marks when it dries. And since the product is non-toxic and has no smell, applying it in big amounts like this is quite pleasant. So what are my conclusions from this project? Well, first of all, that this Bison LVT by Golden Dragon Games was just a palette cleanser that I needed after spending quite a lot of time with my shiny Custodes army. Secondly, liquid pigments could be a game changer for many of us. They are super easy to use, really versatile, non-toxic, and I would say that they can get you 80% of the results for a small fraction of the effort. In fact, I've come to the conclusion that this product is fantastic for younger modelers, and I will be introducing liquid pigments at my skill club in coming weeks. Before I let you go, guys, I would like to thank all of my YouTube members. Your generous support allows me to try new products, like these liquid pigments, and it means a lot to me. That is all for now from me, folks, but remember, keep it up and weather it out.